Suppose x is a random variable with CDF f of x. What do we call the median? The median is simply the value m. So that we have one half. Also, that. So, probability x less than or equal to some value m equals one half, or x greater than m must equal one half. Um, in other words, it will split exactly in half. Easier way to remember this, think of a standard normal distribution. Right in the middle, the mean and the median are one and the same. Yes, what is the probability about the median? 50%, one half. What is the probability below the median? 50%, one half. Does that make sense? So that's where the definition comes from. How can I write this in terms of um, the CDF? Uh, so the CDF plus M equals one half. So F of M would be equal to half, right? So the median simply is F inverse of half. Yes. So I did mention what F inverse is. If F is the CDF, what is F inverse? It has a name. When I did universality of uh, uniform distribution. I mentioned this. F is the cumulative distribution function, which would mean F inverse. Uh -huh. Huh? Yes, so the quantile function, uh, once you find it, you just have to evaluate it at one half to find the median. Are we clear? Yes. Here is an example. Finding the expectation is easy, correct? We found the expectation multiple times already um, with distribution. Suppose we have um, a random variable x that is distributed as an exponential. So x is exponential lambda. <laughs> And we want to find the median of x. Good. How would we go about finding this? We can find the quantile function, but there has to be, well, we could simply use this part to get to the median two points. So I know what um, the CDF of an exponential is. Do you? One minus V 
1 minus e raised negative lambda x is the CDF of an exponential distribution. So this would mean f of n must be equal to 1 minus e raised minus lambda m. Correct. And what should that value be equal to? 1 half. One half. Now we just have to solve for that. So negative e raised negative lambda m would equal to one half minus one, so which would equal to negative half. What will happen to the negatives? Get cancelled. So e raised negative number m would equal to one half. Yes. How do we solve for that equation? Take natural log of them on both sides. I'm glad to remember that part. Algebra is before calculus. You guys remember the algebra part, but forgot the calculus you part. Use that calculus too. Oh, I see. But you use calculus all the way through calculus too. I use calculus algebra. Yeah, because I don't know what the customer is. Fine. So what happens to those two? And what will that equal to? Oh, one minus one. Oh, zero. Correct. Ln of one minus ln of two. Ln of one is zero, so minus ln of two. I didn't have it wrong last So this is the uh, quotient rule. Negatives go away. So the median is simply ln of two divided by lambda. Yes. Now let's see if you remember this part from algebra. When we did exponential functions. This is the formula for a particular quantity with exponential models. Exponential models, exponential growth, exponential decay, doesn't matter. This is the formula for a specific quantity. We'll start with exponential decay because it is very common. Thank you. Half life period, right? So, or, you know, if you take a drug, you want to know when things become half of the original value, that's the formula. Sort of the half life here relates to each other. All we are trying to find is when the probability becomes exactly half. Does that make sense? So, So I have some density function f of x, which is equal to x times 1 minus x. I want to verify first if it's a density or not. Um, how would we verify if f of x is a density? What has to integrate one? The density must integrate to one. So I'm going to introduce an arbitrary constant. So if that constant is one, f of x is a density. Do you agree? Yes. But if it is not one, we've got to throw that constant in there. 
Yes. Um, so in our case, C integral zero to one, x times one minus x dx must equal one. Which would mean C integral zero to one x minus x y dx must equal one. If I integrate x, what would I get? If I integrate x y. And we want to evaluate that between um, zero and one. If I plug in the upper limit, I'll simply have one half minus one third. Lower limit, it's just zero. So I would end up getting Correct. So C times one over six must be equal to one. So all we are trying to say so far is this particular integral integrates to one six. Correct. We want it to integrate to one, which is why I threw that constant in there. So in this case, if that constant becomes six, which it will. Yes. I just multiply the density by the constant. So the given function is not a proper density, but if I multiply by six, it will be a proper density. Do you agree? Because when I introduce the six here, it'll become six times f of x. So six will come out and you're integrating f of x, that will come to one over six. What is six times one over six? One. So the given function in the form that is specified is not a density. So f of x equals six times x times one minus x or zero less than x less than one is a proper density. So in practice, the first thing that you have to do prior to finding expectation, variance, third moment, fifth moment, and whatnot, you should make sure that you're dealing with a density first. We want to find the expectation. So what is the formula for expectation? x times f of x dx. And we have to integrate it over the support of f of x. So integral 0 to 1, x multiplied by x times 1 minus x dx. Yeah. Oh, thank you. 6x times 1 minus x. Otherwise, it's not a density. So if I pull the six out, we are integrating x squared times one minus six. So you integrate x squared, we will get x cubed over three. Integrate x cubed, you will get x raised four over four.
evaluate it between zero and one. They have six times one over 12. So the expectation is going up. Good. Are we clear? Can I erase? Oh, the expectation of x squares, and you can try expectation of x cubed and the median. So, xy is a continuous function. So, notice what is expectation of xy? x y <laughs> times f of x dx. We want to integrate it over the support using the proper density. So integral zero to one, x y times six x times one minus x dx. If I pull the six out, I would have x cubed times one minus x dx. Integral of x cubed is x raised four over four. x cubed times x is x raised four. Integral of x raised four is x raised five over five. Evaluated between zero and one. Only the upper limit matters, the lower limit is zero. So So the expectation of x squared is three over 10. Can I also conclude that the variance of the random variable is three over 10? Yes or no? So expectation of x squared is three over 10. Could I also conclude that no. the variance of x is also three over 10. No, it would be the same if that is zero, right? The formula for variance is expectation of x squared minus expectation of x, the entire thing squared. So it is a very common mistake. Um, people would find that second moment and call it uh, variance, but it's not. Good. Exactly. So that would be the variance if expectation is zero. Like the theoretical variance. Yes. Expectation. Yes. Yeah, so well, I'll just write the formula if you recall. That is the formula for variance, correct? So variance would equal the expectation of x, y, the second moment, if that term is zero. So if we just subtract it one fourth from that will become the variance. Oh. So well, expectation of x cubed is easy.
x cubed multiplied by f of x dx. Um, x raised four times one minus x dx. Yes. Now we just have to integrate. So six. X raised four times one. X raised four. If you integrate it, we will have x raised five over five. X raised four times x, x raised five. Integrate it, x raised six over six. Evaluate it between zero and one. Lower limit doesn't matter, so six. One over five minus one over six which is six times one over 30. We get the third moment to be one over five. Good. Back to medium. Problem can be done without using the CDF part. Good practice to find the CPF. What part is this D? Uppercase F is the CPF. We don't just integrate it over the entire support. We integrate it from the minimum value all the way up to some X. F of dummy variable T. T. Call it U. Um, integral of zero to x, plug in the density, not the given function. 60 times one minus t dt. t squared, oops, over two. Pull the six out, t times one is t, integral of t t squared over two. T times T, T squared, integral T cubed over three. Evaluate it between zero and X. So we would have six times three T squared minus two T cubed over six. I just found the common denominator so that I can combine the new pieces. What would happen to the six on the six? That's x. Sorry. Because I have to plug in the upper limit. Now, what is the domain of the CDF? Same as PDF. Of course, you can extend it to negative infinity, positive infinity. We know what the story is going to be. Past the support will always be one, um, past the upper limit of the support. Below the lower limit of the support, it will always be zero. Now that we have. The CDF, all we have to do plug in M to find the median. So 3M squared minus 2M cubed equals one half, which would imply minus 4M cubed plus 6M squared minus 1 equals 0. Yes, that's a cube. <coughs> that's a cubic equation. Now we can't factor this, right? What should we do? We can use rational root theorem. You can use rational root theorem. That's a lot of work. 
Thank you, Sydney. You just put it in the calculator and see where it crosses zero. Um, so put it in the calculator and tell me where it crosses zero. Um, one half. Okay. What are the other two? Uh, one half plus minus three over two. So those are the three roots for the cubic polynomial. These two cannot be the answer. Why? Uh, they go beyond zero. They go beyond the support. One half plus y root of three over two looks e one. One half minus square root root of three over two would go below zero. So no good. So the median. Is one half. Are we clear? Yes. 